shoot for the moon. Even if you miss, one of your colleagues will come collect you and lead you back to safety from wherever you end up trapped. I'm pretty confident that's how the saying goes. Moons of Darcelon is an action platformer not dissimilar to the likes of Lemmings and Oddworld, where you are tasked with guiding stranded and bumbling Darcenauts back to their base. Powered by AI, these lemming-like figures will follow you Pied Piper style when you call out to them using your voice commands. Tell your comrades to come hither, move right or left or stay in place, and they will obey, at least to the best of their pea-brained ability. You'll need to rescue a set number of Darsonauts to leave each level, and you'll be awarded with stars for completing additional challenges. The core concept is quite simple, but the execution? Well, that's another story. Not only will you need to fend off green baddies, bats, UFOs, and more, but the lunar landscape is not exactly easy to navigate either. Our fearless leader can take a good bit of damage, but take enough hits and falls and you'll fail your mission and return back to the beginning of the level. Don't forget, the Darsonauts can also take damage and become exhausted during travel, and yes, you can accidentally harm them in the process of trying to save their lives. Oops. You totally blew it. Fear not, you'll have a good deal of weapons and gadgets at your disposal to aid in your quest. This includes your standard issue laser gun and jetpack, of course, but you'll also get things like a ground maker gun and light post gun to manipulate the treacherous terrain. And did you think we'd be making this whole journey on foot? Because think again, you'll also be able to drive your rescued Darsonauts around in various vehicles. Trust me when I say that controlling these vehicles will not always be smooth sailing, but they will certainly add some spice to your gameplay. I may have been at fault at a few vehicular homicides, but hey, most of them made it back to base. Moons of Darcelon definitely has some unique physics and a quirky control scheme that push the challenge and frustration levels to the max. For example, your left bumper is the jump button, and the game is sure to let you know that this is intentional. Oh, bummer, bro. That's because if you're using a controller like myself, you'll be using your face buttons to switch between gadgets. Your right stick is your aim and also allows you to sprint if you point down. Directional buttons are the voice commands to lead your comrades to safety or death if you suck like me. There is a learning curve here, but the combat and platforming did eventually click with me. Every level is going to require some surveying and planning and probably some trial and error, but you'll get there. That's not to say that things get easier because they don't, but eventually you'll come to accept your fate and push through the pain regardless. There were some deaths that I did feel were cheap and avoidable, especially when my character would seemingly teleport to the top of a platform after taking a hit. I consider myself a pretty patient person, but some of these deaths had me setting my controller down and taking a break for a moment so my own anger meter could cool down a bit. Motherfucker. On the bright side, the game has a built-in GIF making tool, so you can create GIFs out of your successes and many, many failures. I died a lot. Like, a lot, a lot. And the game was never shy about reminding me that I suck, in the form of passive-aggressive speech bubbles. I'll admit the first couple of times it was funny but the jokes began to repeat and many of them started to feel rather defensive, like the developer was trying to predict how people were going to react to the challenge level of their game and got prematurely sensitive about it. Obviously, this challenge level isn't going to be for everyone, but it's kind of a weird stance to take when you're mocking your potential patrons before even hearing out what constructive criticism they may have. All art hey, in the modern world, including video games, should be open to both praise and critique. Opinions are like buttholes. Almost everyone is going to have one, and some of them are shitty, but Moons of Darcelon cannot exist without buttholes or opinions about it also existing. That's how this works. 
As a side note, it does also look like there is an external level creation tool, which should scratch the itch of those more patient and creative than I. I can barely get through a level in one piece, let alone make my own, but I'm very glad something like this exists. I will say, Moons of Darcelon really nailed it on the presentation, though, as the game quite successfully imitates the look of a retro pixel art era game, complete with rounded edges and scan lines, both of which you can turn on and off in the options menu. The landscapes, while perilous, are pleasing to look at and have great textures and color schemes. I also love the layered effect of the environments and how dynamic and interactive the lighting is. For example, adding a lamp in a room will allow the skittish Darsonauts to pass through a once darkened space. Meanwhile, building a bridge will create new shadows where the light can no longer pass. It's a neat effect and a cool way to add some visual obstacles. Load screens, on the other hand, are a little less attractive, with bright and clashing color bars paired with static images of the characters and enemies. It still fits the vibe, but it's a little less easy on the eyes than the rest of the game. Music, though, is also great, using an authentic sounding 8-bit chip effect that perfectly recreates the farty bass lines of video games past. I know that sounds like an insult, but I swear it's a good thing. Some tunes you may recognize, others are more meant to add ambiance and match the tone of the game, but all are great and made even the most frustrating levels a little less infuriating. Still infuriating though, just to be clear. I also really liked the synthetic voice used for the commands, though I do wish there was a little more variety to the speech because I found myself whispering, shut up under my breath after a while. All in all, Moons of Darcelon is a heaping helping of challenge, a pinch of subjective humor, and absolute gobs of style baked into a very odd lunar confection. It's frustrating yet satisfying at times and recommended in small doses as too much at a time will probably raise your blood pressure. 